Hey you guys, it is Star. Thank you so much for tuning into the video. So today we are going to be continuing my couponing 101 series. I am so sorry that it has been so long since I've made a video in this series. I really wanted to continue it at least every week, but I have been traveling and I've been sick. I've been all over the place. So this series has really gotten away from me, but I really wanted to make sure that we got back to it this week. So I made the first video in this series a couple months ago in February where I did my couponing 101 how to coupon for beginners video thank you guys so much because you guys have shown that video so much love it is doing so well but ever since I've done that video I have gotten so many DMs so many comments so many people contacting me telling me reasons why they have been struggling with couponing, reasons why they had to stop couponing, reasons why couponing just no longer works for them. And what I have gathered from that is essentially that the struggle is real. And the struggle is real when it comes to couponing. Couponing is not easy. It is not easy to amass a stockpile. It is not easy to do this for a number of years. How do I know that? Because I have been doing this for a very long time. And over that time, I have embraced and faced all of those struggles. So in today's video, we are going to talk about how to overcome the struggle. I'm going to tell you what I've learned in the past decade of couponing to overcome a lot of the challenges that we are facing in 2019 as couponers. So without further ado, let's talk about it. So the very first struggle that I have heard over and over again recently is about coupon limits. So people are saying, you know, there are so many limits on coupons now, like you just can't even be an extreme couponer. You just can't even get enough of what you need. And I completely understand this struggle. When I started couponing almost 10 years ago at this point, they had almost no limits on coupons. And now when you look at a coupon like the PNG, for instance, I'd say it started out maybe like five years ago. They were like limit four of the same coupon. Then they went to limit two of the same coupon. And I was looking like, what? What is this? Limit two? Okay, whatever. And now they have taken it a step further and they have made it limit one. And the reason all of these limits have come is because more people are entering into couponing, more people are misusing coupons, and more people are committing coupon fraud. That's just the reality of it. And coupon fraud is a whole different conversation that has been also buzzing in the coupon community lately because people are upset about people doing coupon fraud because of the limits and all of the things that happen to us as a result of coupon fraud. I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but what I will say is that it's none of our job to judge and jury other couponers. They have a whole judicial system for that. So try to stay in your own lane and manage your own couponing journey and all will be well. But let's talk about limits. So with limits, there are ways now in 2019 where you can overcome them. So you have to get more creative than you know you had to four or five years ago when you were couponing or even 10 years ago when you were couponing. And I know for a lot of people, getting creative when it comes to using coupons is something that they don't wanna do. But like for instance, this week we have Chic Razor deals all over the place. So razors are free at so many different stores. But the Chic Razor coupons that we got in Sunday's paper, they have a limit of two coupons. And for a lot of the deals that you need to do, like the deal at CVS and the deal at Walgreens, you need to be able to use at least enough coupons to buy three packs of razors. So what do you do when the coupon says limit two, but you need to buy three packs of razors to do the deal? What you do is you vary up the type of coupon that you use. So at CVS, for instance, they have digital coupons. On their digital coupon site, there is a $7 off of two Chic Razor coupon. So you use one of those and you use one of your paper coupons from the inserts. And then therefore, you've only had to use one of your paper coupons. You have respected the limit of the coupon and you've still been able to do the deal. Or what you could do is you could go to coupons.com, 
print off a internet printable coupon for the Schick razors for $7 off of two. Use one of those and then use one of your paper coupons. However you wanna mix and match it, but I hope you guys get what I'm saying. You're gonna have to get creative with the types of coupons that you use with some deals to make sure that you can still respect the coupon limit and still do the deal if that is really, really important to you as far as respecting the verbiage on the coupon, but it is possible. It's not a reason where you should be like, I just can't coupon at all. What you have to do is say, okay, let me think about this for a second. How can I finagle this? How can I wiggle this so that I can do what I need to do to get this deal? Because for me, I would rather utilize my creativity and use multiple different types of coupons than going in the store where my husband needs razors and paying full price. Have y'all ever paid full price for razors? It's bananas. I cannot do that. So that's the way that you overcome that first struggle, so to speak, on coupon limits. So the next struggle I want to talk about actually involves what I am sitting in front of, and that is stockpiling. So I have talked to so many people over the past month or so who have told me they don't understand how you can amass a stockpile or they only have a small space, but they want a stockpile or all types of things. They feel like, you know, in order to do this, they are going to have to have a stockpile with all of these products that they don't want or need. All of those things couldn't be further from the truth. First of all, you do not have to be an extreme couponer in order to coupon. You do not need 50 bottles of laundry detergent in order to be an, a couponer. You can coupon on a very small basis, only getting minimal items that you need for your family, and you can do that your whole coupon journey. I have a comment on my Couponing 101 video where somebody said, oh, please understand, you know, see how much stuff she's sitting in front of. You have to get that much stuff if you want to be a couponer. That's the first this thing from the truth. It's actually much easier to coupon small. So only buy small quantities of things and you can pace yourself. You can take coupon breaks because once you have a certain amount of things, you can say, you know what, I'm not going to coupon for the next couple months. I can take some time off until we use what we have and then I can go and start couponing again. If you have a small space, which I used to have, then what you need to do is figure out A, what type of coupons are important for you to stockpile. If you have a small space, you can't stockpile everything. So if you know it's important for me to have you know, tissue paper and, and paper towels and garbage bags and you want laundry soap and you want cleaning products in your stockpile, then you say, okay, this is my space. It can hold this many of these items and these are the items that I'm gonna focus on. So that means as a couponer, you shouldn't be going out buying Nine Lives cat food and a whole bunch of soda and cereal or whatever it is filling up your space because you know you've decided that you need to stockpile these products in your space. And for the other things, you know, of course you wanna shop strategically and make sure that you're not paying full price, but those are not things that you may go hard from, from a couponing perspective. That kind of leads me into my next thing, and I, that is, I hear so many people say, how do I coupon for food? Or how do I coupon for organic items? I don't wanna use Gain, I don't wanna use Tide. How do I coupon for my, you know, organic whatever? How do I coupon for vegetables? So here's the thing. You don't. You don't really coupon for vegetables. That's not really what you're going to go in the store to coupon for. When you're a couponer, if you want to use this couponing hustle to pay for things like vegetables and your fruits and your organic goods and all of that, things that we do get coupons for, but we don't get enough coupons for them to con, you know, for, to coupon and build a stockpile on on a consistent basis. What you have to learn to do is do a couple things. So first, you have to learn to use your overage. So I did a whole video called like how to get groceries for free or something like that. I will link it up here and in the description box below where I went into Walmart and I used my overage on some other items to pay for my grocery items that I did not have coupons for. That's one way that you can coupon for groceries and get them for free. Another thing that you can do is you can actually get items that you don't need. So let's say that you don't like Tide or Gain. 
get the tighter gain because it's free or because it's really cheap, sell it. And please don't come for me about selling stockpile stuff. Sell it if you need the money and then use that money to buy your organic groceries. I know quite a few people who do that. So let's say you, you know, you really only like your organic, whatever, whatever. We never have coupons for it. Go on ahead and get those four bottles of Tide. Sell them on OfferUp or let go. Get your money and buy your organic groceries. That's another way to use couponing to get the things that you need for free so i'm just throwing out things that you can do to overcome the struggle because there are so many different ways that you can monetize couponing to help you overcome different struggles but you have to be open to them so let's talk about another struggle the next struggle i want to talk about is rude cashiers rude store managers cashiers who don't understand how to read coupons cashiers who won't put coupons in that are beeping there is nothing worse there is no bigger struggle as a couponer than a beep and i get so many questions from people like what do you do at that point when those coupons start beeping and the cashier refuses your coupon you know what at this point in my coupon life i have followed every path that you can follow when that happens to you. And I feel like I have dealt with every type of cashier and every type of manager. I've handled it every different type of way. And let me tell you about the different ways that you can handle that. So when I first started couponing, the way that I would handle it is I would actually get very upset. I would get very mad. I would turn up in the store. I would hold up a line. I would make them go get the manager and that manager's manager. If that manager was in the store, go all the way up to the highest person in the store. I would call customer service on the phone in the store and make them talk to the manager. I was all the way in and I would not leave that store until I got what I came in there for. That way, can be effective but it can also get the police called on you and from from my experience looking at it five years ten years later it's not worth it nothing that i was arguing those people down for in the store is worth it and what it does is it makes them dislike couponers it makes them treat the next couponer even worse it really doesn't create a healthy situation for you or for the store Another way that you can handle it, and this is how I used to handle it as well, is you can just simply call customer service or you can escalate and ask for the district manager over that store. I have had much more success over the years by asking the store manager for their manager's phone number. Usually that district manager has a cell phone and I escalate to them. That store manager is gonna be more upset about you reaching out to their manager directly than calling customer service. A lot of times customer service doesn't get me anywhere, but that is another way. You can also write a letter. You can file a BBB complaint. I filed a BBB complaint on Target that ended up going all the way to the top of Target and it really handled my situation very effectively. So that's another way that you can handle things. And then the other way, the final way that you can handle things, and this is how I do it now, is I simply leave the store and move on. I'll go to another store. I will wait until that cashier or that manager who I'm dealing with get off. And then I will come back when their shift is over. Or I'll simply just let it go because I really don't need anything in the store at this point. And it's not worth me. I'm old enough now that I respect my blood pressure. It's not worth me raising my blood pressure over some tide or some gain or whatever. I just don't even have the time or energy for it. So if it's not my day and the coupon deal is not going to work at this point in time, the way I overcome the struggle is I simply move on. But if you need something and you know you're in the right, I would recommend that you escalate it. But it really just depends on where you are. Those are all the ways that you can overcome that struggle. The very last struggle that I want to talk about is one that has been on my heart super duper heavy, and that is new couponers reaching out to me saying nobody is willing to help them learn how to coupon. When I did my one-on-one -on -one video, so many people reached out to me and they were like, I can't believe you did this video for free telling us how to coupon because there are so many people who have this veil of secrecy over things related to couponing and how to make money with couponing and nobody wants to share the information. I really wish that it wasn't like that and I really want us to start returning back to 
the couponing community that used to exist way back in the day when we were really all about helping each other. But with that being said, I will tell you as a new couponer, so much free information is out here. There is no reason why you should have to wait or delay your couponing journey to wait for me or anybody else to teach you how to coupon or teach you about a deal. Google is free. Researching is free. YouTube is free. There are so many people like me on this platform still who are giving out free information day in and day out. There are so many different blogs. There are so many different resources. I have a 25 minute long video telling you the ins and outs. So you should be able to overcome that struggle. But for my old head couponers, for my OG couponers, for my couponers who have been doing this for a long time, Let's be a little bit more warm and a little bit more receptive of helping our newbie friends out. I am not going to handhold you by any means, but I do believe that there is something so good about helping other people learn how to save money for their families because we have all been in a place or are all in a place where we need to save money for our families. And that's what it's really about. So I'd love to see us do more of that as we overcome these couponing struggles together. So that's all you guys. That's all I wanted to chat about. It's just some of the struggles that I have seen people talk to me about. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Let me know what other things that you may be struggling with, things that I may be able to help you with in the couponing community. Um, Cause I'm glad to share anything that I have learned along the way with other people. Please remember to like this video, thumbs up this video. Let me know um, that it was helpful to you and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. That's all you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.